Okay, so here we are in the middle of a field, in the middle of nowhere, because we're carrying on Locke's initiation process in the UK, doing stuff that Brits would do to get you used to life in the UK, picking your own fruit. Uh, and you would have paid for it. <laughs> you would have paid to do it work. I paid it, paid, paid for it. I know, right? It's, it's a bit weird, isn't it? They're just making, they're, they're, taking, they're taking advantage of people who like the whole process of, oh yeah, you know, picking my own fruit. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna make you pay for it. Yeah, and, yeah. Then, they, and then they, had, they don't have to hire workers to pick fruits. They just, <laughs> oh, we just get our customers to pick it by themselves and pay for it. Yeah, so this is good. Locks already grumpy and we've just started. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to UK Lock. I haven't seen... Lad, that's a fat one, that one. Yeah. That one there, look at that. Fat. It's not, it's not focusing. <laughs> I haven't seen be so fat in Hong Kong. It would be it would be this size. And it's not focusing. Yeah. Uh, Many focus. That's because they eat rice over there. <laughs> that one, that one, that one goes to the pub a lot. So anyway, Locke, we're not here just to look at bees. We're here because I've got a couple of lenses that are complete bargains. Less than five US dollars, yeah. roughly. Three pounds. Three pounds. You Sometimes you have to pay, pay more for, for parking. Three pounds fifty. So there we are. Bargains. Cameron. But just how bad, I mean, just how good are they? For four dollars, five dollars. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually skeptic when you mention this idea to me. It's like they can't be good. They will be soft. They will be vignetting, um, stuff like that. And it's heavy. Well, it's expected that it's heavy. not going to be brilliant. But can you get something decent for something that costs less than a magazine? In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna mount mine straight away and let me stop rolling on this one. I've got an adapter. So you, the one you're holding is a Pentax K mount. Mine is Olympus. I have to buy an adapter for this. Right, look at this. So the adapter is more expensive. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> you just planted five trees. Did I? Where's it? That was easy. That that one. Maybe that one. So not not sponsored. Hashtag not sponsored. It's weird. I mean, it's, what it's, do you mean? The, the shape. It's just you. You're laughing at my my skinny girth. It's from uh, from a little bit width and thinner, thinner a little bit. Well, that's the amazing thing, isn't it? When you think about it, 70 to 150 millimeter, f 3.8. Look at that. There's no f 3.8 to that's 5. Point whatever. Food 3.8 and mm. 52 millimeter filter thread. Isn't that pretty crazy? <laughs> actually, it is. <laughs> isn't I mean, it? but is it actually good? Let's find logo. out. And uh, the, the logo is different. Even between these two lens, this is the, the current logo. Oh yeah. I quite like this one actually, it's quite funky. Yeah. <laughs> and another thing is it keeps spinning around. So you can't use the, um, you know, the square filters because it'll just <laughs> rotate. Internal zoom. Yeah, four of them. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised this is internal zoom. I mean, it is push and pull, but it's like, it just slide around here. And this one is internal focus as well. I don't know, actually I have a filter small enough, so... <laughs> I've got this H and Y thing, and then a step-up ring, and then the filter. For that price, you can get like five of these lenses. Yeah, all right, all right. Look at that. I'm just saying how, how, how cheap okay. are these lenses. Yes, you are very right. I mean, you can't, you can't knock it really, can you? Okay, let's me put this on as well. Just before we carry on, this video is sponsored by Wirestock. Make money from your photos, video and vector files by uploading to Wirestock. They get distributed to all major marketplaces, all from one single free account. Royalty rates higher than usual, and Wirestock takes just 15% only when it sells. Get started with the link down below. It will be soft because I'm using F32 <laughs> without a filter. I'm trying without a uh, anti filter at first because I don't want to degrade the uh, image quality. Well, it doesn't focus that close at all, does it? This one focuses really close. Oh, oh yours macro, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, that's why I... <laughs> I'm so, so stupid. I, I keep using 210 and then for this is 80 
and and saying, oh, why is the inmate stabilizer system not working? <laughs> because it it zoom in when you push towards you and oh. zoom out to this is eighty. Oh, and yeah, yeah, it, it works. It works pretty well. Yeah, the stabilization on this. I think that's probably why I, I thought it would be good on the S5 because. You said that is it's not going to be very sharp. It's going to be soft. But I think it worked quite well for video. It's just, it's just that um, for zoom lens, after zoom, you can't. Um, you have to set the stabilization setting again. So now the stabilization set at two hundred and ten, and now it's really stable. With some bokeh, well, I'm at f22, but then let me put on the uh, anti filter. So, f4, it kind of you can tell it's an old lens from the image. I mean, if you look for this look, it's pretty, pretty nice. But if you want some normal video, it might look like a hey, why, why is it like that? Well, you know, some people like have a sort of softer look for the cinematic effect or whatever yeah if you look for that but it it's just when if we shoot our video like this it's like oh why, why, why is Kai so dreamy over there I think mine doesn't look too bad actually you, you're saying about yours looking a bit soft but this this doesn't look too bad I have to admit that I was expecting much worse. Look at it this way, they're much cheaper than Lomography cameras and infinitely better. And also the close focusing on this one anyway is a little bit pro prohibitive on the, the 70 mm end, but on the long run it's not too bad. Look at that, this looks, it looks alright. I think it's pretty nice. Fruité! Oh, look at that. Look at the fruit lock. Oh. Oh, juicy. Strawberry is usually sour as well. <laughs> True, that's, 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 that's the thing, isn't it? Strawberries, you usually have it with cream or, yeah, or yeah, sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's the point then? <laughs> you know what? Uh, yeah, let's have a lovely, healthy f bit of fruit. Let's put loads of sugar and cream on it. Let me just have a, a strawberry flavoured chocolate then. Is that healthy? I think it's quite good ergonomically because it's it's quite thin, you know, you can <laughs> basically get your, your whole hand around it and then you can and twist things. It's got a little window there for... Uh, aperture? Yep. And then the zoom... And the 70s, the zoom is that's funny. Turn the whole thing... <laughs> so it's so funny with this bit yeah. on top. You know what, let's take some photos. I want to see how, just how bad it is in terms of sharpness. Let's take this off then. I think it looks all right through the viewfinder. Through the viewfinder. Yeah. <laughs> this tiny little viewfinder. Not just through the viewfinder, but on the computer screen too. Wide open shots with the 70 to 150 un eye poppingly sharp. In fact, I wouldn't really call it sharp. If you look closely, check out how the Lumix glows a bit. If you don't pixel peep, it looks all right, and bokeh is not too disagreeable. Stop it down to f5.6 and it's really all right. It's actually not that interesting for, for, for photos, is it? In the strawberry field. Oh look, there's a strawberry. And I can't focus that close with this. Try this one then. Yeah, I always find it interesting with these uh, lenses when they've got all oh, oh, these different, these old lenses, these classic lenses got all oh, this kind of all depth of markings. field scale markings and it gets to the point where I just think, oh, I can't be bothered. You know what? <laughs> I just look at the ones that, that I need to, but all this, I can't be bothered, man. Yeah. Which is a funny thing, isn't it? When it's two, 80 to uh, 80 to 210. Mm -hmm. But you, you, it's pumpy action from 210 to 105, and then to access 80, you have to twist it. Hey, I didn't realize when I was using it, was I using 80 at all? So it's 105 millimeters there, that's at um, that distance. 
three meters, then boom, it's 80 when it's uh, one meter. Twist it three meters, 105 me millimeters. This, that's, that's, that's quirky. That is really quirky. That is quirky indeed. But hands up if any of you know what the problem is. Virtual pat on the back if you do. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's just for... What? Uh, I, no matter if I push the, the lens forwards to keep try and keep it at 80, it will twist back to 90. Basically. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just at infinity. Hang on. No. <laughs> Is it just? You think it's a filter? Yeah, because. <laughs> so, so... <laughs> because of this lens hood. If you put on an anti filter or whatever filter, yeah. the lens would restrict the. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but well, still, it's, yeah. it's still weird that you can't use. You could, so, so that is one, one thing, isn't it? You can't use anti filters if you want to use the full range. Because when, when you get to. Watch the hood. This is the hood is back. When you go towards 80 millimeters, <laughs> you extend the hood when you go to 80 millimeter. That's why if you put a filter on it, you can't extend it and it restricts the, the zoom and uh, focusing. <laughs> that's a quirky that's a quirky design, isn't it? Not quite so well thought out. I would rather don't have that integrated hood. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the easiest way to, to extend the hood. Boom. Ready to go. So anyway, I'm just going to put it in there. My keys are in that pocket, but it doesn't matter. Glass and keys, superb combination. Photos. Photos, passion, you. Digital Rev. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. Photos, passion, you. I almost you. forgot. Some bit of my brain, it's just boom. Just trying to block it out. Photo pose. I thought that 80 to 210 would be atrocious, but it's very, very not atrocious. I like the close focusing abilities and okay looks quite reasonable. It would be nice for portraits. Slightly softish wide open rendering would be good for ugly people too. I think this, I mean some people might look at this as a portrait lens because it's got the sort of focal lengths that you might want for portraits. The contrast is a bit low by modern standards which gives it a sort of old school vibe. Cropping in, you can see the pumpy 80 to 210 doesn't have as much definition as the 70 to 150 wide open. For photos, the 70 to 150 is just an acceptable amount of softness. It sort of takes off the edge of a digital image, which when combined with the lower contrast sort of looks pleasing. Anyway, somehow we took a sort of wrong turning at the strawberry picking aisle and end up in Guildford. So we've come on a staycation. Not really a staycation, we're not staying in a hotel together, but we're just pretending. After all, they're all talking about recession and stuff like that, so get a cheap lens, yeah. stay at home. This is not my home. Get a cheap lens that's cheaper than the filter. Cheaper than it takes to get here. Exactly. We naturally, or we, we always naturally gravitate towards the water, so we might as well go towards the water. I think this is this is all right for stills. You can take some all right stills. It's not going to be super sharp. Oh, water! There we are. Ah. Oh. Ah. oh, look at him! Oh, no. oh, oh, it's water down there. And then, he, he doesn't have a strap. Five point six. Mm. F eight. The F eight surely should be sharp enough, right? What is sharp enough anyway? Sharp enough for me might not be for you. And then of course, expectations are going to be different for $4 lens off eBay, right? These lenses can be useful for anyone starting out with lots of creative intentions, but with not a lot of money to spend. I'll take some of the flowers, just, just to get an idea of the color. I always find it quite convenient with a pumpy, pumpy zoom like that. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Quick. Maybe not that good for video. You don't think so? I mean, when you want to do slow zooming, it's really difficult with this. And then you will move the focusing as well. Uh, yeah, that's true. 
But there must be a reason why they don't do this anymore, right? Yeah. That's a good question. It's just not... It's just not very fashionable anymore. Well, apart from this one. This is probably the best purpose for it. Just as a B-roll lens. See, I don't have to spend too much money. And it's a very practical lens. Yeah, it's not too sharp. It's not modern performance. But I think that's not something you really need when it comes to video anyway. Like this, basically, it's got a great set of focal lengths for establishing shots, candid shots of people on the street. I like the look, I don't need crispy, super sharp shots for a video like this, and if you don't have the benefit of shooting log or have lots of dynamic range to play with, the low contrast of the lenses will be a little beneficial for creating a flatter looking image. The crazy thing is, this is even this is just a 58mm filter thread, which is... You know, it's quite quite small for a lens like this. Well, you know, these days you've got, oh, ED element and uh, whatever. Extra X, XD, Super ED. Super low dispersion, whatever. So you get darker, darker, and then they, get, they have to make it bigger, I guess. I'm not expert on lens design. Lens is just bigger. Yeah. Oh, I see. Do you really need it? Guess you don't, not necessarily. I think so though. I mean these days all lenses are like almost perfect. I like that. You like that? <laughs> yeah, I like that. For most purposes, yeah. of course, if you want some special uh, retro effect, yeah, of course those are like too perfect. Well, I, I think it's nice to have a little bit of imperfection. Certain things you don't want distortion. You don't want really want uh, you know color fringing. Yeah. But a little bit of softness or a little bit of vignetting, not too bad, is it? Yeah, it doesn't, I mean, I don't think, oh no, this lens is not as sharp as this lens, I'm not gonna buy it, or I don't like this lens, I'm gonna throw it in the bin. It's rubbish. Of course, this is probably quite a bit softer. And this is from the bin as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, nobody wants it. You can see it on eBay, there's tons of them around. Very true that I said that I don't know, I kind of don't know what I would use it for. But then sometimes I do need a longer lens. And then I still haven't bought one because uh, I, I, I don't want to buy a new tele lens and then I use it once in a year. Yeah. But that's cheap. Like last time I. We shot the um, set nine at the um, BMX BMX park thing. Yeah. I don't have enough reach yeah. when I'm shooting a uh, video for you. And uh, but that, that is like dirt cheap. I think it's it's cool, especially when shooting video vlogs and stuff like that. You know, you've got your your, your wide stuff. You've got your wide lens, which is for when you're holding it. Like but sometimes there's not enough reach when you're shooting B rolls on the, the standard ultra-wide zoom because it goes to, what is this, 60? 60, it's already pretty good for yeah. a kit lens. That's just a slightly long standard. Yeah, and usually when you shoot vlog or something, you would use a, a 16 to 35, but I don't even need to buy them because I just borrow from you. <laughs> Come on, you can just pay me three pounds and you can have one of these. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is how much we've grown up. We, I've, I've gone through quite a lot of the video and I've not done this pumpy action like, uh, all over the strawberries. So from when you've got a filter on, you can't pump it the full length of the shaft. Circumcised. Log, that's, that's disgusting. That's really immature. I'm talking about lens here. 